This is Jack Porter with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. I'm the South America Program Director, and these are frequently asked questions about Patagonia. So Jack, where exactly is Patagonia and how do I get there? Yeah, it's a great first starting point. Uh, Patagonia is the southern portion of the South American continent. So it's actually the bottom third of both Chile and Argentina. Um, it does span between both countries. It starts, I guess, on the west coast, on the Pacific coast, uh, and then continues all the way to the east coast uh, over on the Atlantic. And the region, the Patagonia region, is split vertically by the Andes Mountains running north to south, which is also the border between Argentina and Chile. And how do I get there? So getting to Patagonia... There's two different ways. You're either going to be in Chile or you'll be in Argentina. And to get to either side is going to require different logistics. So I'll start with Chile. Um, you're going to leave from the United States on a direct flight down to Santiago. And then from Santiago, you will fly then to a regional airport, uh, either Balmaceda or Puerto Montt or further down south. But that's pretty much uh, how you'd get down to Patagonia in Chile. Then in Argentina... A little bit different, you fly into Buenos Aires from the United States, uh, then you're going to need to transfer airports in Buenos Aires, so there's a little bit of added logistics there. Oftentimes trips heading to Argentina, you have to spend a night in Buenos Aires. For some folks, that's a deal breaker, you know, they have limited time, they want to get down right into the action. For others, uh, and for me personally, I think it's a great uh, piece of the trip, you know, it slows it down, you get to see the Buenos Aires, a global city. Uh, and then once you're in Buenos Aires, you then fly from that uh, domestic airport to your regional airport in Argentina. Um, and then you're picked up by the lodge and, and you're fishing. So, Jack, why should I go trout fishing in Patagonia? Yeah, that is the million dollar question. Why fly halfway around the world to catch trout? I mean, here in Montana, a couple miles from where we're sitting right now, we've got world class <laughs> trout water. Um, so I get that question a lot. And, and I think there's a number of reasons why people should go to Patagonia to trout fish. Um, first is just the quality of the fishing. It's significantly less pressured than anything we have um, out here out west um, and just kind of you know throughout the United States in general. So that lack of pressure makes a huge difference on quality of fishing. Uh, secondly, it, their season falls in our winter season. So it's reverse season. So it's a great time to get a break from winter you know you fly down there and then all of a sudden it's summer you're trout fishing fishing hoppers dry flies so it's a great change of pace for an otherwise you know cold time of year with short days outside of that the, the fish behavior is unique down there uh, what's interesting about patagonia is the trout are not native and there are no trout species native to patagonia so uh, similarly there are no birds of prey that developed with the land that hunt from the air targeting aquatic species. So the fish, you know, you'll see fish like this holding up in the water column with no fear of an eagle or an osprey, uh, which can be really exciting. It makes for a lot of sight fishing opportunities and, uh, you know, really engaging angling experiences. And then lastly, the cultural element, uh, you know, just being in a, in a different country, a different language, meeting new people, and just being in that remote countryside of South America and Patagonia is, is is something everyone should experience, and it is you know really special when you're down there. Well, oh, neat. Uh, now, what kind of different species of trout are there that I can catch? Yeah, so you can catch all the all the fish we catch up here. So rainbow trout, brown trout, brook trout, and then all the way down south at the tip of the continent in Tierra del Fuego, you can catch sea run brown trout as well. Um, and then you know. Each lodge we work with has certain species that they target. Some are only brown trout, some are a mix, some have, you know, drainages with brook trout. So, uh, you know, understanding what species you're targeting is, is important as we, you know, look at options and dive into things. So, Jack, you mentioned that, you know, the seasons are flipped down in South America um, versus here in the United States because obviously they're south of the equator. Um, so, like, when is the fishing season down there in Patagonia? And you know, is there a, a best time to go? Yep. So the season starts in November, generally. You can go earlier, can, you know, but November 1st is kind of what's accepted as the start date. 
uh, for the season down there, and it runs through April generally. Uh, you know, early season, just like here, November, December is going to, you know, come with some more variable weather, some rain, maybe higher water. Uh, but it can also have some incredible fishing and some really good hatches and less pressure. You know, and, and as you get into the season, January, February, early March are certainly considered the peak season. That's midsummer months. That's when you can expect, uh, you know, warmer days, consistent weather, that kind of stuff. Great fishing, terrestrials, hoppers, all that. Uh, and then as you get into late season, late March, April, we get into the fall weather and fall conditions. So that's your window there. And then, you know, the best time to go, it's such a hard question to answer. It really comes down to what the traveler is looking for. Uh, you know, if you want to fish streamers and, and focus on big browns, the fall is going to be a great time to go. If you want, you know, good weather and hopper fishing and pretty forgiving fish and, and you know, enjoyable days outside, uh, then maybe January, February. If you like to be in there first one of the season, fishing spring creeks, you can deal with some rain, then I like early season. But So I guess the answer is you can't really go wrong. It just depends on what you're looking for. Nice. And how about the sea run browns? If I want to go down and try and target the sea run browns, is there a better time for me to go down there? Absolutely, yeah. So the season, the sea run browns are definitely more seasonal. They're either there or they're not, and the lodges operate obviously when they are there. So the sea run brown trout seasons kick off uh, right around the new year. So whatever the first Saturday is near the new year, that'll be when their season starts, and then they'll run through late March into April. Peak season is definitely late January, the month of February, and early March. And oftentimes the price at the lodges will fluctuate with the uh you know fishing schedule or the i guess when the fish are there and, and when the weeks are considered the best so when i go down what kind of equipment do i need to bring with me like rods reels fly line flies tackle what are your suggestions yeah so some lodges do include equipment uh but i'll just talk about the gear that you will would be using on a trip down there so like most trout fishing, five weight, six weight is kind of the go-to. Um, you can definitely bring a seven weight uh, with a sinking line if you know you're going to be somewhere with bigger water. You want to fish streamers, but in general, the five weight and the six weight is going to be the go-to with a floating line. Uh, the six weight is the all-around rod down there. You know, there's quite a bit of wind. Patagonia is known for that, and that six weight gives you a little more backbone, gives you a little more power to push those bigger flies, you know, through the wind and get them where they need to be. Uh, then, you know, you're going to need waders and boots, even though you are going during the summer. It's Patagonia and the weather can be all over the place. So waders, boots, you know, floating line, five weight, six weight, and then layers. That's also very important. You know, you could in one week easily have, you know, 80 degrees and sunny with no wind down to 50 degrees and raining. So you got to be prepared for all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then outside of that for flies... A lot of the lodges are starting to include flies to make it easier on the guests, but uh, fortunately they're not, the fish down there aren't too picky, so you don't need specific patterns and sizes. You know, general attractors seem to get the job done, usually bigger stuff. Again, this will depend on where you're going in the time of year, but uh, for the most part, just kind of your basic trout flies get the job done. You know, elk hair caddis when there's caddis around, a parachute atoms or a purple haze when you've got mayflies, and then anything foam and rubber legs during the summer months uh, seems to work. Hmm. Black beetle if it gets tricky. So down in Patagonia, I mean, what can I expect weather-wise? Yeah, I'd say, you know, you look at forecasts and it, it they're always all over the place and, and that's really how it is down there. So it's important to be ready for everything. So you're gonna want, you know, to have your waders with insulating bottoms underneath in case you can have some cold weather. You're gonna also wanna bring some wet wading pants in case hmm. you have the opportunity to wet wade. You know, having long sleeves and a sun hoodie or protect, you know, a buff, some protection there is key. Uh, and in the wind as well, you know, people get windburn and sunburn and come back to the lodge and you're just glowing red. So, you know, bundling up and kind of battling the elements is something that people should be prepared for. A good rain jacket is critical. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Uh, do the guides down there speak English? Yeah, they do speak English. Uh, where you may run into some issues or some uncomfortable moments might be you know, in an airport or in Buenos Aires if you're out to dinner. But, you know, the people in Argentina and Chile are very friendly. Uh, it's pretty easy to get by. Uh, so it's really not, not a huge issue and, and not a deal breaker by any means.
Uh, now, do I have to exchange my money before I go down there, or can I do that when I get down there? So for most of these trips, you really shouldn't have a need for foreign currency. Mm. The, the lodges and the guides and the staff prefer U.S. dollars. So I recommend that people bring their you know, tips kind of thought out ahead of time uh, in one amount in U.S. dollars. Should be good on that for the trip. If you did need pesos, it would be at like a street market in Buenos Aires or a small town in Argentina or Chile. Uh, but for the most part, you know, credit cards are accepted at most restaurants and, uh, you know, most locations throughout the country. So it, there shouldn't be a huge need for, you know, foreign currency unless you spend, plan on spending time traveling on your own or getting into, you know, some remote corners where, you, where just U.S. dollars aren't going to get it done. So, Jack, is Patagonia a good, um, you know, choice for maybe less experienced anglers um, or even non-anglers? Um, like if non-angling spouses come along or, or maybe kids, what are your thoughts on that? So I think it's a great option for less experienced or non-anglers. I'll start with the less experienced angler. The majority of the fisheries down there are either you know, being accessed through private land or are just less pressured in general. So that creates, you know, a, a really approachable uh, fishing experience with willing fish and it's a lot of dry fly fishing. So we send a lot of people down there uh, or a lot of groups down there with mixed levels, uh, mixed interests, and everyone always has a great time. Everyone gets on fish. The guides are fantastic. They're bilingual. They're very patient. They're good at what they do. Uh, oftentimes they're from the area they're guiding, they know the waters intimately, so they do a great job at getting anglers of all ability on, you know, on fish. Then for the non-angler, there are, you know, of course, certain lodges that are very fishing focused, and then you've got other lodges that are geared towards groups with mixed interests, or they've got, you know, non-angling things. So for a non-angler, there's, there's tons to do at the, at the lodges that have those things. Um, available like horseback riding is extremely popular down there hiking exploring national parks heading into local towns to get some culture cooking lessons birding uh, glacier tours all that kind of stuff is uh, you know available so and you can even do a mix you know fish one day not fish the next day and, and kind of take mm -hmm. it as you go through the week so uh, I'd say you know Patagonia is a great place to go angler non-angler you know, super experienced to first timer. So Jack, I mean, obviously it takes a little while to get down there. Um, and if I go all that way down there, I mean, I want to make sure I'm, you know, spend enough time. Yeah. <laughs> so on average, how long would you recommend uh, to stay at a lodge for? Yeah. So most of the lodges are set up for full week packages. That's seven nights, six days, you know, most, for the most part, they're, you're arriving on a Saturday, you're fishing for a week, and then you depart the following Saturday. A lot of lodges actually run that as a strict schedule, just so they, you know, keep their calendar tight. They've got their guides working every day. They're making sure um, that they're, you know, taking advantage of the season. Uh, so in some cases, it can be difficult for a shorter package, you know, like a three-day kind of thing. There are a few options, but it's more limited there. Really, that week-long trip, I would say, is kind of the sweet spot. Uh, if you have time to extend, a, a lot of programs will do like a 10 day or, you know, you could even do two weeks and combine a couple places. But I really think, like you said, it's so far to go, you know, halfway around the world, 11 hour flight down there, and then you're in a city, then flying to Patagonia, you know, you're going to want six days at least. Uh, so I think that's a good starting point. Okay. Um, now, Jack, the big question, Argentina or Chile? Yeah, this is this is the big question. I, I try to encourage people, instead of focusing on the two countries, to kind of take a step back and focus on the experience that they're looking for. Um, you know, from a fishing perspective, what kind of water do you want to fish? What kind of lodge? Uh, what kind of scenery do you want to be in? And then from there, you know, we can start to look at the different regions and programs and, you know, wherever they are, is that's the best fit for you. Uh, now, if you have particular interest in seeing Santiago or seeing Buenos Aires, then, you know, of course, that's going to define the country right away. Uh, but for those who don't really have a preference, I try to say, let's, you know, t take a step back, talk about what you're looking for, and then from there, we can figure out what makes the most sense. Hmm. 
like right off the bat, are there a couple pretty pretty significant differences between the two? So I'd say if I was going to have to generalize things, Chile is known for, you know, it's it's on the Pacific coast, right on the Andes Mountains, very dramatic landscape with a lot of relief. So they have quite a bit of rain. In a lot of areas of Chile, it's considered a temperate rainforest. So they've got bigger water, um, you know, these big lake river systems connecting each other. It looks almost like Jurassic Park in places. Um, compared to Argentina on the east side of the Andes, where you're in more of a rain shadow, it's definitely a more dry climate, feels more like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. So if I had to generalize, I would say those are some kind of big picture differences. You know, Chile being that kind of more foreign, wet environment compared to Argentina, a little bit more dry, um, you know, more familiar setting. With that said, both countries have both of those settings. So, and some lodges have access to both of those areas. So that's why I don't like to start with Argentina or Chile. It's more like, what are you looking for? And then from there we can figure out, you know, what area, what region, what lodge makes sense. Hmm. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful and please feel free to reach out for more info. So what am I supposed to say? This is thanks again, or thanks for listening. You can do the Ron Burgundy. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs>